Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 158, we're going to talk about retubing your amp on a budget. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so a lot of people have very limited funds with which to pursue high quality sound. And in this episode, we're going to look at one very affordable approach. But first, we need to talk about breaking news. One of the first test builders of the new kit phono preamp has finished. Yep, and right on our heels of finishing the build series too. We had them sending us emails saying, when are they going to be done? <laughs> well, it wasn't quite that bad, but we had a couple of friendly emails saying, "We've I've caught up. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and we finished the build videos yesterday. The last one went up then, and this morning, we have news that somebody's finished. Yeah, and his, his kit build looks fabulous. Oh yeah, I did a great job finishing the plinth. And the the actual circuit boards and the wiring looks exactly like my prototype. I mean, it looks exactly like the prototype. And the fun thing is, um, the day before we um, uh, he finished, I finished kit number one. Kit number one is always what be, what it is the build kit that's used for the filming process. And um, and of course we had to put it into the system to see how it sounded compared to the uh, the prototype that was the manufacturing prototype. Mm -hmm. And wow, it it it's it sounded great. Yeah, if anything, it's actually better than the original prototype because we did make a small tweak to uh, to shielding the si some of the signal wires and uh, it improved the noise floor. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing. You can have the same circuit. Uh, with identical components, uh, same build, same builder even, <laughs> same workbench, uh, same solder, and you can actually make a little bit of a difference by tweaking your design or your build so that the noise floor goes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know at first it's, a, it's like, why would the noise floor make a difference? But what happens is if you can get your noise floor down well below the audible range the music itself has a blacker background to come from and it just helps it stand out better it stands out better basically uh, and it it makes a difference everything makes a difference mm -hmm. some so, some things matter more <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're looking forward to hearing from the rest of the test builders about uh whenever they're completing them and what they think of them and uh, hopefully we're going to have some reviews next week maybe that would be exciting and uh, a heads up uh, to our viewers, there's going to be our first ever kit deal. It's about a month away, It's uh, so stay tuned. We're actually going to start showing off what the deals are going to be. Mm -hmm. And we're working hard now. We've got about a month to get ready because we're going to be sending out a lot of kit units. And it's, there's a lot of labor. These are mostly handcrafted kits. So these are going to be some of the first full production runs of several of our kits. We're going to be getting a lot of parts ready for you. Yep. And just a heads up, the sale is going to be a one day only sale. So we're going to give you plenty of warning though. <laughs> yeah, we will. Okay. So let's get back to the topic of the day. So what are you going to do? You're on a really tight budget. Well, I've talked about this before. Choose your amp very carefully, preferably one that is well reviewed and takes a low number of tubes. But in most cases, that's going to need mean that you're going to have a lower output amp and that you're going to need efficient speakers, probably of a, about 93 dB or higher. And efficient speakers poses its own sort of problem. Okay, so what if you've got, let's say, an R8 or many of the other higher power class AB amps that need eight, nine, or more tubes. And when I go to my audiophile friends and to hang out and listen to music, they're all running amps like that. So a really good option is to spend your money on a, on a good quality vintage preamp driver set, or the front end is another way of calling it, and then 
get a good deal on the power tubes by by new new um, new production new production tubes and the whole idea for this show came about because I got an email from uh, Viva Tubes and I've I've bought from Viva Tubes not recently but years ago and um, they're a they're quality outfit the prices are very reasonable and they're running a sale on already very affordable uh, current production power tubes and I was looking at the prices and I was thinking even if these aren't the greatest power tubes in the world um, they are really inexpensive mm -hmm. so if you're gonna buy your power tubes modern power tubes here's one key piece of advice besides doing your research and seeing what people like it's a little hard to do because most people who are buying tubes like that have only ever heard one or two um, modern power tubes and they really don't know what a vintage power tube sounds it like. It can be very subjective. It can be very subjective but modern power tubes in my experience are really prone to popping like really early in uh, service so and in fact the nickname for Chinese power tubes is firecrackers so and I didn't even know this nickname until I started popping some power tubes um, they were all Chinese made so buy from a company like Viva Tubes do not and I repeat do not buy on eBay do not buy on Facebook marketplace in fact the the biggest financial loss we ever took was buying on on Facebook marketplace yeah um, you have no recourse really if something goes no, wrong nothing we got robbed and the guy continued to rob people after he robbed us <laughs> and uh, anyways we had a little spat online let's so, say <laughs> so if you buy from Viva tubes and you have a tube go bad they're gonna stand behind it yeah or somebody comparable I'm yeah. I'm not actually advocating for Viva tubes um, uh, but there's got to be a number of well-reviewed modern tubes. So anyways, it's just that they have some good prices right now. So you could get into a set of power tubes by now. So that, and the, you know, the whole idea of buying a modern, uh, power tube is that vintage power tubes are expensive. They, I mean, power tubes back in the day were always expensive they were never cheap tubes because they have much higher specifications than a simple voltage gain tube they're driven harder they burn out faster and they're they're rarer these days new old stock yeah so i mean the the the, the cost of them just continues to go up and the only good news about vintage power tubes is that we've been really lucky charles also known as the <laughs> <laughs> has found some excellent vintage power tubes so we've been able to keep stock they sell it once in a while various types but we've been mostly been able to keep stock of them so mm -hmm. that's been one good thing so what about the preamp set well and why does it even matter so you're going to have in a typical um integrated tube amp which is very it's a very common amp these days something like an r8 and there's a whole slew of them that are similar you're going to, you're going to have a preamp stage built in as well as a driver stage now the preamp stage is a voltage gain stage and that's going to have the single largest effect on the final sound that you're going to get everything all the tubes will matter and of course the amp will matter and the components in the amp will matter but the single most important thing will be those preamp tubes and they'll typically be higher gain tubes in the r8 they are um, 6sl7s and in many tubes they'll be a 12ax7 mm -hmm. so if you're not sure which one is your preamp gain tube look for the higher gain tube and the driver stage is basically a preamp for the power tube in which the it brings the voltage even higher and in a class a b amp they often serve the function as a phase splitter so they do both duties in one yeah you may have a two a single 12 au7 or something like that that does the phase splitting duties as well as the driver tubes but it's pretty common to do a circuit topology in which one tube per channel like a 6SN7 
or 12 AU7 drives the signal up and splits the phase as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that preamp tube, that's absolutely critical, but the driver tube is quite important as well. You want something that's a robust tube. Um, uh, if you're running a 6SN7 or a 12AU7 as a driver tube or a number of other tubes. And if it's phase splitting as well, you want them to be tightly matched on their sections as, uh, as well, or and, it's going to affect the sound. And in fact, this is a set that came out of the R8 and that you just used to clear some beautiful Yale 34s yeah, that you're going to show off in a minute. I yeah, won't, we'll I'm not going to, I'm not going to steal your thunder. <laughs> um, but you were listening to these photons and talking about just how good they sound. Yeah, I was blown away. We like to use the photons because they're reliable tubes and they're great in the, the center channel, the V5 spot on the Wilson tin, which has to do with regulating the power supply. <laughs> And so we love to use it in that spot, but we don't listen to them very much. And I was honestly blown away by them in the driver section. They sounded really good. Um, they had just a very deep extended bass to them that was very enjoyable. And we're going to look at the tube a little bit more in a minute because you've, you've got, well, in show and tell, I think you'll show off what the early versions look yeah. like and the dates. But one of the interesting things is um, the last lot we got from one of our European tube hounds had very, very close matched GM numbers. Oh, they were beautiful testing. They were definitely new old stock. They almost certainly came out of the same case. They were all date matched within about a month of each other. Um, they were just fantastic tubes. Yeah, and it doesn't matter who made the tube. It's fairly unusual to get a case lot with very stable GM. That, so that means that the 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 crew on the factory floor was feeling good about life during that that those days that and, the tubes were made and they hadn't been picked over yet by other people and and had the mismatched ones left behind which we often see with vintage tubes that's true and in a class a b amp as you mentioned if the driver stage is doing the phase splitting it's really really important that the both sections remember these are twin triodes and a 12A7 is the same thing. In fact, the 12A7 is very much a modern version of the 6SN7. Yeah. So those GM numbers, they have to be fairly close. Now, this is basically a perfect match. Yep, they're within three points of each other, which but is really good. Normally, for any tube, 5% is considered essentially a, a very, very good match. Mm -hmm. And in a uh, harder to find vintage tube, 10% is acceptable. But in the driver stage, aim for 5% or better. And that may be part of what you were hearing. But the power tube you were listening to may have had something to do with <laughs> Maybe, that. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, and in fact, why don't we take a look at some of the... Um, some of the tubes that you've brought in charles all right well let's change places here we already have some up on the um i don't know what we call this our table our platform <laughs> our display <laughs> well it's actually my elevated uh, assembly bench yeah uh so this is the front end set that i was listening to earlier and in it we're using three 6sn7s which are actually the 6h8c and these, that's in Cyrillic. In Cyrillic. And so this is the Russian produced, uh, or sorry, Soviet produced uh, 6SN7 equivalent. And this is the old version, which is fairly hard to find nowadays. And they have one really big defining feature on them that is easy to spot. Let me see if I can get this on camera. Ooh. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. Yeah, maybe. It's tough to see it. There, there is a plate getter right down in there, and the later versions have a saucer. Yeah, and it's typically called a foil getter. Mm -hmm. And it might pretty, be easier to see it from the back here. Let's see. Pretty much every foil getter is located at the bottom, there it and is. you normally have waste chrome. And you can see, you won't, so you'll have a clear dome. Yeah. And those tubes, um, I, 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 I guess we really need to give credit to our tube hounds in Europe because 
I think they're a giant killer and nobody really knows about these tubes or talks about them. The later version with the saucer getter is a totally acceptable tube. It, but totally it, acceptable. But it, it's got none of the magic of the earlier version. Doesn't sound as nice and they tend to be um, less consistent testing. But you know, tubes can be all over the place. Um, but the really interesting thing about these tubes is that they're built on the, the very old style 6SN7 plate platform which is essentially the first version Sylvania's, the Bad Boys, the GE's, the Marconi's, all had this back-to-back T-plate structure. And that was on the 6SN7 GT's. And this technology was all brought to the Soviet Union in the early days of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Trying the, the US was trying to get the Soviet tube production up uh, so that um, they'd be prepared to, to, to fight a war and uh, on the Eastern Front and RCA. RCA sent over essentially an entire factory worth of tooling and expertise to get them up and running. So it's not surprising that the early Soviet tubes look a lot like the early um, US made tubes. Not, not surprising at all and built very similarly too. I mean the the Sylvania bad boys also have a, a bottom foil getter set up and these straight T plates. And these remind me quite a lot of them in the sound, and considering the price of them, that's that's amazing. So these are great tubes, and in the uh, higher gain section, we're using our later version 6SL7, 7F7 rebase tubes. Oh, not quite centered, there we go. And these have just been great. We've been getting some amazing feedback on all of our rebase tubes. They sound great. They look great. We sent out these tubes for the gain sections of the uh, kit phono preamps um, as a gift to all the test builders. And we always try to choose tubes that are, are good sounding tubes to us um, as mm -hmm. a gift so that I mean, obviously you want the kits to sound as good as they can. And as sort of a stock tube, uh, wow. Um, we just, we, we, we could roll actually the earlier versions, which may have an edge on this later version, mm -hmm. but we just have never bothered these sounds so good. Well, this just brings to the table everything that we love about the Sylvania sound. So they're just great tubes. And so I think we have a new front end, end set for Wilsonton in the store built around these tubes right here. And it's a great budget set. Actually, I think it's probably the best price budget set that we have for the Wilsonton that's using these tubes now. For octals, I think you can go in with the 6GU7s for a little bit oh, less. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's another good example of, uh, of a medium mu dual, a dual triode and, uh, and adapting them over. Okay, now you have a special set of power tubes that's discounted that mm -hmm. will help people save some money if they can get a, up to the price of these tubes. So I was clearing this front end set and the power tubes were quite a bit nicer. So we have a beautiful set of Mullard EL34 XF2s and these are a discount set. And we don't do this very often. Um, they usually sell out almost immediately whenever we do. But anytime we get a nice set of tubes that aren't quite testing to, you know, new old stock levels or something close to it. Or have minor cosmetic defects that sort of knock them down a little bit of a notch. And these are maybe one milliamp short of what I would consider a good used set. They're right on the edge. They're right on the edge. But uh, the chrome's all good on them. The one of them is fantastic. actually new old stock. Yeah, this guy right here. <laughs> So I'm not sure how it ended up testing low like that. Um, and we actually have, you can buy a spare tube for it. You've got one right mm -hmm. there that matches the set very closely. And we always, always recommend with, um, with, especially with quads of power tubes or larger uh, match sets of power tubes to have a spare tube on hand. If you have a spare, my rule is you'll never need it. And if you don't, well, <laughs> you can guess what will happen. So power tubes are not long, long lived like preamp tubes. They will die periodically and not because you've abused them, 
I mean, if you abuse them, they'll die really fast. Mm -hmm. But because they, they, their service life just is not nearly as long as a preamp tube. And the, you will pop one every once in a while. Um, now, you might get a couple of years of long hours out of a quad before you pop one. But... Um, You'll sure be happy you have a spare whenever that happens. Especially a match spare. So these are heavily, heavily discounted. And if you stay this long, you actually can use one of the codes on top of the discounted price. And we have, I'm still trying to get used to this camera. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yeah, we have, um, I'm left-handed, so this card's actually backwards for me and the camera's backwards as well. But anyways, so that's why I get so confused. So we have a secret discount code. We actually have two. That's the one that's really easy to figure out and one that's huge. So you got to spend the big bucks for the huge one. And somebody got the huge one. Um, and it hurt for a moment. And then I realized, you know, that's great. He's, he's got, he got the deal and I'm actually happy for him. So in fact, I'm always happy to see people grabbing discounts and we can reach almost everybody for a flat rate $20. And if your, your order is $150 or more after your discount, the shipping's on us, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jen and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.